Who are you people? What do you mean by you people? Well, just calm down. All right, just calm down. You people is best described as a talk show for the uninvited. Maybe you're the guy who gets funny looks from police when you're walking down the street. Maybe you're the girl who gets pervy looks from mall security guards when you walk through your favorite Cinnabon. Maybe you're the guy, the middle-aged brilliant PhD at the party who stands by the cheese and crackers because he can't hold down a conversation. Or maybe you're the Indian dude who sounds so white that when people meet you in real life, they're like, That's what you people is. And you people, is, it's not targeting a particular group of physical people. It's a state of mind. It's an existence. It's a culture. It's, it's a new way of being. It's being on the outside and being proud of it. You know what I mean? Not being uh, truly uninvited. Not being invited to the party. Not being invited to the party, Sandy. I don't need your party, Sandy. All right? It's a new talk show for a new time. We're gonna be having real talk on this show, authentic dialogue with people that you do not see usually on your TV screen. We're gonna have some real truthful discussions that hopefully point to a deeper understanding and insight of who we are as, as human beings. Not only as individual human beings, but who we are as a community, as a human species as a earth species. And where does that take us? Where do we come from and where are we going? Join us. There's also a lot of fake bullshit on the show and some stupid bits that are half baked and not very well planned. So uh, that, that's also there too. Um, anyways, uh, so because this is a live talk show, I have a monologue joke. Oh. <laughs> Down here, okay. Um, so here's uh, our first monologue joke. In the wake of celebrity nude photos being released, Apple Computers assured its customers that the leaked photos were not due to a breach in its iCloud system. Apple takes its security measures seriously ever since virtual assistant Siri had erotic dirty phone calls with Tiger Woods. So we don't have a live audience, so I'm just gonna let you at home laugh at that real quick. So go, go ahead and wrap up the laughter at home. Uh, you know, you can keep quoting the joke if you want. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that joke so much. Um, I grew up in the 80s and whenever, growing up in the 80s, I was convinced that the 1990s and the 2000s and beyond were the future. You know what I mean, the future. As in like by the 1990s, we would have flying cars, we would all live in like really cool space pods in the air, they just existed in the air, and it was always daytime. And um, seeing the events of Ferguson unfold this last month, we are truly both in the future and the past. When you look at the militarized policed state and the, the response, you look at their actual equipment, it's futuristic, the armored vehicles, it's really cool looking, but the racism is still from the past. So it's sort of like we are occupying the future and the past at the same time. And boy, does it make the present really uh, crappy. Um, I used to be excited about jetpacks, but I'm not excited about jetpacks anymore because you know you have uh, technology like, like what we're seeing in Ferguson and like drones, cool technology. When you look at the actual technology, it's actually kind of neat, but it's being used for destructive purposes. So I kind of feel like now I don't want jetpacks to exist because I feel like on a macro scale, they would be used for assassinations and breaking up peaceful protests. And on a micro scale, it would be the shitty kid in high school whose father's rich who could buy him a jetpack and he just lights his farts using the jetpack. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> okay. Cool. See, folks, it's hard to make prank calls because, like, you know, I, 
I try it and people, you know, you, you can't do it anymore. It's, it's a dying, it's a dead art form. It's like the Latin of phone calls. Can't make prank calls anymore because everyone can see who you are and your number and all that jazz. It's ridiculous, man. So uh, I got a mustache today and, uh, you know, I traded in my beard for it. Uh, I like it. It's a little like unnatural. I don't understand mustaches, but I do it because other people have done it in history. Um, but it's weird, like I think mustaches, I don't know who decided it was a good idea to have a mustache. It's ridiculous actually, because it's like, like when you shave, like either like, I had a beard for a while, right? And um, you know, and I like getting lazy and I like having a beard, but I wanted to look nice for the show, but I want to do something different with my facial hair. But I mean, like, I realized like how, I don't know who invented the mustache or who started doing this, because it's ridiculous because I was shaving my face and shaving all the hair off and it took all the willpower not to go over my lip because that's natural when you're shaving. So I'm just trying to figure out how the male species was like, oh, this is, was there like really somebody, <clears throat> somebody accidentally, they were just like, well, uh, <sighs> my arm's really tired. I, uh, I can't, can't do this shaving thing anymore. Oh boy, I need to, uh, Am I, on the I need air? to take a nap. <laughs> and so he takes a nap and then he wakes up and just forgets that he was still shaving. And somebody's just like, uh, oh, wow. Hello? Why'd you use that hair? Why is Hello? That... Hello, hey, how are you there? How are you? Oh, hi. I was just say, I wanted to call in. I wanted to say, uh, I really, I like the mustache. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Yeah. Uh, Alyssa. Alyssa? Yeah. Alyssa, are you, are you in the, can you tell me where you're calling from? Yeah, I, I'm, I live in Harlem. You live in Harlem, okay. Well, thank you, Alyssa. I, I just find it an unnatural thing, but you like mustaches. Maybe don't, that was... Don't find it unnatural at all. It's natural. It's what a man does. It's what a man does. Okay. Um, well, you don't think it's weird that, like, somebody is, like... Is, don't you think it's a little noncommittal in terms of, like, either you should just shave or not shave? I like it. You like it? Okay. I think that my husband has a mustache. You think that your husband has a mustache? No, I know my husband has a mustache. I was going to say, I think that, um, I think it looks good on you. And if, uh, okay. I don't know if, I just like kissing his, okay. his mustache lips. Cool. Well, Lissa, uh, thank you so much. I, I'm going to keep my mustache now because you called in. We had to take oh, another call. So happy. Thank you for watching. Keep watching. All right. Hey, caller, are you there? This is Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Oh, Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm so sorry we had to keep this interview kind of short. Uh, sorry that the Skype thing didn't work out. Um, yeah, and I have to apologize because I knew about the eight-second delay, but for some strange, ungodly reason, the only sound I was getting was from the, from the television. So yeah. that was part of the problem. So okay. I, I, I'm glad to be able to correspond with you now. So um, I know it will be short, but... Yeah. Let us begin. <laughs> well, like kind of the core of like why I wanted to talk to you, thank you, why I wanted to talk to you tonight was, um, uh, you know, you are the founder of One People's Project and uh, that's an anti-racist organization and you guys specifically target hate groups, neo-Nazi groups, uh, you know, you're, you're run of the mill hate groups, right? Am I correct about that? And you sort of, you expose them and you sort of like try to like uh, neutralize their power, is that correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I don't necessarily say um, right-wing groups and such. I mean, I'm sorry, um, Nazi groups and such, because we pretty much run the gamut in that regard. Uh, we try to deal with um, groups of all types of groups on the right, whether they're against LGBT, they're um, religious groups that are trying to um, place some sort of dominance on us or what have you. Um, any any kind of organization on that side of the aisle that mm -hmm. tries to um, do the rest of society harm, we try to zero in on. And we've been pretty successful for the past 14 going on 15 years. Okay. Well, so I, and I was telling them well, when we had our delay that um, the, what, the way I just discovered you was from the documentary Erasing Hate with mm -hmm. our, you know, uh, Brian Widner, who was a former neo-Nazi who got his tattoos removed. Um, so, I mean, from what I got from your website, you know, you guys, One People's Project, it's an anti-racist organization. 
you you do go after people like these uh, groups that are kind of obviously out there. And now what I wanted to talk to you specifically about tonight, because I'm just interested in your perspective, is that, you know, when you look at the police and what's happening in Ferguson, uh, you, the police response to peaceful protest, when you look at um, John Crawford III in Ohio who was shot at that Walmart because somebody thought he had a real gun, even though it was a toy gun, but he was shot on sight. And then Chris Lawley in St. Paul, Minnesota, who was like, uh, you know, taken to, just arrested for no reason. He was waiting for his child at, uh, at school, right? So, I mean, right. the people, so first of all, like the, the folks calling the police on these two gentlemen, and even the police officers themselves, not only in these two cities, but in Ferguson as well, they would not consider themselves hateful. And in fact, I guarantee you, they would all be like, oh, well, I'm not racist, but, so how does like, how, like, how do you think the work of One People's Project can fight these more hidden forms of racism? Well, I think that's pretty much where we are in this day and age, because we are dealing with, um, I wouldn't say hidden because it's obvious to people who aren't um, engaged in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I th and to be honest with you, I think it's more of a case when you hear those denials, it's after all these years of dealing with that particular situation, whether you're talking about um, Trayvon or Mike Brown or let's go way back to Amadou Diallo or Eleanor Bumpers and all that, it, it becomes a part point where you wonder whether it's becoming less and less denial and more and more lying. I because see. we know what it is by this point. Right. I mean, we had Richard Pryor complaining about this back in 1974. Right. And I think what's happening now is that, yeah, it's the typical routine. We see this pattern each and every time, as I pointed out. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that might mean the cop is going to walk in Ferguson. But what it also means, the difference, I should say, the difference is that people are responding to it in a way that says, you know, we can resolve this now. We never w was able in a position where we said, okay, we can do a resolution. We can finally we, um, come up with a solution. I think this time around... Um, we're looking at our city governments. Um, that's what happened with Diallo. Um, when Diallo was shot um, 10, oh, sorry, 15, 14 years ago, we started looking at Giuliani. Rudolph Giuliani was mayor at the time and saying, right. hey, uh, what kind of climate have you created? Right. And at the same time, we were dealing with the, um, with the kids who were shot um, by the police on their way to a basketball, um, basketball tryout. Right in New Jersey, and we were looking at the governor there. I think what it is is people are starting to um, refocus their energies on the people that are responsible for putting um, putting this kind of element in power and basically just keeping it alive. That's why the DOJ today is doing is um or rather tomorrow will be announcing an investigation into the Ferguson Police Department itself, not okay. just the police officer that was that killed Mike Brown. That's important. Okay, uh, Daryl. Um, unfortunately, like we are running out of time. Are you able to do the show again? Some, like, if I have it on next week or the week after? I owe you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I owe you. Yes. Okay. Um, it may not work on Skype. This might be the way we have to do it. Okay. All right. That's fine. Just, okay. Thank you so much, Daryl. All right. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right, okay. Uh, Chris, do I have time for my last guest? No. Okay. Oh, we're off the air. Okay, all right.